Hey everyone, it's Chris from the Bronx Children's Museum. Did you know that the Bronx is bursting with art and music everywhere you look? You can find amazing art all around and it's being made by people just like you and just like me. Paintings, sculpture, graffiti, collage, music. If you can imagine it, it's being created right here in the Bronx. Come along with me today and together we'll learn more about all this amazing art and some awesome artists. Hey everyone, Chris here from the Bronx Children's Museum. Today we're going to learn about another Bronx-based artist, Edwin Torres. Edwin is a photographer whose work focuses on the special people in his neighborhood. His photos show us the beautiful moments that are easy to miss if you're not paying attention. Edwin is also part of the Bronx Children's Museum's Art Builds Community Collection, which explores and celebrates the work of local Bronx-based artists. Today we're going to join Edwin in his studio as he shows us some of his favorite photos and what inspires him to create his artwork. After that, I'll show you how to take a great self-portrait from the comfort of your own home. So let's get started. My name is Edwin J. Torres. I'm a photographer born and raised in the South Bronx, particularly Hunts Point. Photography really helped me defy the stereotype and overcome my fear of meeting new people, experiencing the Bronx, and it gave me a voice. A voice that I could use to um, communicate for my community, for people who didn't have a voice. And that's one of the things I love the most about photography is that it's, it's a tool for you to say something with. A lot of my work is in black and white, uh, a lot of portraiture, a lot of photographing the communities in the Bronx that you see every day. There's, there's more and every time you stop for a second, you see, oh, that's an interesting photo. Like, trust your gut because it's, it, 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 you're most likely right. And it's important for you to like actually take advantage and take a photo right when you see it, right, right away. This was in Fordham Road. There were kids playing by a fire hydrant and I just love the silhouette of this little girl right here running by the fire hydrant. I think it's an interesting shape, geometry. It kind of shows the block, you know, it shows people playing and having a good time. This is one of my favorites too. It's a photo of this uh, young boy hanging outside of the train station waiting for his mom to come home. Him and his friend were just hanging out. They came home from the basketball court. And I had known these kids because they were on my block and I just asked them if I could take their picture. And they were super open to it. I love the black and white and how it creates like a silhouette, a really nice silhouette um, around the boy here. And you can see the other kid throwing the ball at him and passing it. Throughout my days as a photographer, I would also take pictures of myself. I would make a self-portrait either of an object or myself through a mirror. I typically take a picture of myself like holding a camera in my hand because that's what I see. I'm always, I always have my camera with me. You know, I try to keep it with me at all times because you, there might be a photo that you really like that you want to capture um, and you never know. So it's, it's good to be prepared, but um, self-portraits are important. Self-portraits are important because you're showing the person behind the camera or behind the paintbrush um, or the object that could be meaningful to you. It's about relating to your work, um, relating to your photograph. You know, how did you feel when you took it um, and why did you take it? And talking about those things and explaining those things. So here's a photograph I took of myself with one of my twin lens reflex cameras. Here's another picture of me. Um, I took this one because I was inspired by Vivian Mayer. Um, she was a photographer in the 60s, I think, but nobody knew she was a photographer until one day a documentary came out with all of her incredible photos. So the, the main thing I can tell you is, you know, if, if you find you're falling in love with photography, keep doing it because it's an expression of your voice when you share something that's personal to the world, it can really inspire others. 
I work full time as a photographer and it's one of the coolest jobs in the world. It's so fun and it feels very empowering to be able to share my story and, and travel every day to different places and, and take pictures. That's honestly the main reason I do it because every day is fun. Um, so I really want to thank you guys for like, you know, joining me in this studio tour um, and hearing about my artwork and what I had to say and my story. And I really hope that, um, that you can connect with this and, and grow from it. So thank you guys. Thanks, Edwin. It's always so fun to see how you highlight the great people and places from right here in the Bronx. It's going to be amazing to see some of that work in the museum. As part of the Art Builds Community Collection, Edwin has taken beautiful portraits of children and families from the Bronx. These portraits are going to be blown up to life size and displayed throughout our museum's space. These photos will show how the Bronx is home to all types of creative kids and their fantastic families. Now that we've seen how photographs can help us see things in new and interesting ways, let's take a self-portrait. A self-portrait is a piece of artwork that an artist creates of themselves. Before we take our self-portrait, let's learn a few things about photography. To begin, we should learn the different ways we can set up our image. First is horizontal. That is when we take a photo that is wider than it is tall, like the horizon. It stretches across what you can see. This setup is also known as landscape. The second is vertical, and that is when an image is taller than it is wide. Many pictures of people are set up like this, and so this setup is also called portrait. It's up to you as to how you set up your image. I'll be going with a landscape, a horizontal photo. Another thing that is important to photography is whether a photo is in black and white or color. I'm sure all of you noticed when Edwin was showing you his work that he really likes to take his pictures in black and white. But you don't have to do that. It's your choice if you want it to be in color, and we're lucky because we can make that choice after we take our self-portrait. A self-portrait should say something about you, but it doesn't need to be a photo of you. It can be of something that's very important to you. I love playing music and painting, and these photos of my guitar and my brushes can definitely be considered self-portraits. You can also take a self-portrait that shows your community. The neighborhood someone lives in can be very important to who they are as a person. As a grown-up, taking the trains and buses every day and choosing to live in this city full of wonderful people is definitely a part of who I am, and these photos here show that. If you do choose to take a photo of yourself, you can experiment with it. This photo is pretty normal, but you can do fun things to make your photo different and a little more unique. In this photo, I wrapped myself in a fur and picked out my curly hair so it stands on end. I think it gives me a more eccentric look. Eccentric is what fancy people call weird. In this photo, I put on a full costume and here's a self-portrait of me dressed as one of my favorite artists. Frida Kahlo. I was hoping to capture some of her wonderful spirit and energy by taking a photo of myself as her. Whatever you do, make sure your photo tells a story you want it to tell. There's a million things you can do with a self-portrait. Here's a few things to think about before you take your self-portrait. What you include in your photo is your choice. What do you choose to do when you have fun, and where do you choose to do it? Do you want to take a photo with your favorite toy or in your favorite park? What are your favorite clothes to wear? Maybe you have a shirt or a hat that you really love. What do you dream of being when you grow up? Maybe you want to dress up as a firefighter or a doctor. A piece of artwork is all about what you choose to show and the choices you make are what make you special. Now you'll need a few materials to take your self-portrait. The first and most important is a camera. It can be a cellular phone someone in your family has, or a tablet that you use for school or play, even a webcam on a laptop. All it needs to be able to do is take a picture. You may need to borrow a camera from a friend if you can't find one lying around. Some other things you may need are objects to pose with in your photo. Maybe you want to wear a cool costume, or make your room look like a completely different place. Include whatever you'd like in your photo. 
Now grab your camera and let's take a self-portrait. After you decide what you want to include in your photo, you need to figure out how your camera works. It should be pretty simple, but usually you can get to your camera app on your phone or tablet by finding the camera symbol. Once you have your camera ready, we need to figure out how to use the timer. The timer allows you to set a countdown until the camera automatically takes a picture. This will be extra useful if you're taking a photo of yourself, because you can stage your photo, set your timer, and rush to pose. You can usually find the timer at the top of your screen when you're using your camera, and the symbol looks like a clock. It will give you a few different times to set your countdown to, but I like to set my countdown to 10 seconds so that I'm not rushing to pose. Once you've got it down, take a few shots. This shot here is my favorite because I really like how the light hits me and that my cat Cricket jumped up on the table while I took it. Take a few photos of yourself or of what's important to you and see what you come up with. I love to draw and paint, so I spend a lot of my time at my work desk making art. Maybe it isn't the most exciting thing to look at, but it's honest and real. It's my favorite thing in the world, and that makes it a really important part of who I am. After taking a few pictures, pick your favorite, and we can move on to our final step. Once you pick your favorite photo, you'll want to open it in your phone or tablet's picture gallery to begin to edit. To edit means to change or correct something, so we want to change or correct things in our photo to make sure that it looks just like we want. Once you have your picture open, you can start editing by finding the word edit or the symbol for edit on screen. Mine is located in the top right. Now that we're editing, there's a few things you can change here, but the quickest and easiest way to change the look your photo has is to add a filter to it. A filter can change the entire look and feel of your photo. You can add any filter you'd like, but I'm going to choose to make mine black and white, like Edwin's. I really like the look of it now, and I think the change to black and white adds something special to this photo. There's a bunch of other settings you can mess with, so experiment, see what you like. I think that looks pretty good. How about you? And voila, we're done. Remember, just because a photo is taken in an instant doesn't mean you have to rush. Take your time setting up your self-portrait and show the world exactly who you are. Here are some kids who have worked with the museum doing just that. There are amazing things all around you. How do you think you can share those things with the world using your unique point of view? Well, I hope you had a lot of fun meeting Edwin and learning about photography with me today. Remember, your self-portraits could be of anything you want them to be, but they should tell me something about you. After you take your self-portrait, make sure to share your photo with me and everyone else at the museum. I can't wait to see what you all create. Have fun and I'll see you soon.